and welcome back, Internet. My name is Chris, and I am your guest host tonight, because I am not an actual host on Makers on Tap. Joining me tonight are the lovely gentlemen, Joe <laughs> and Aaron. <laughs> it's almost like I bring the cluster just badness back whenever I come back. Just just nobody's prepared for me, and it all goes awry. <laughs> your words. Your, yeah, your words. <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Yeah? It's been a long day. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, we're going to talk about a few fun things tonight, and uh, we're going to be getting into some interesting topics. Um, but first, as always, what are you guys drinking tonight? I'm on the last can of Hoptronics, and I have a whole huge care package of Triptych and Three Floyds coming from Steve on Thursday, and I'm so excited. Nice. Yeah, there's there's going to be some good beers coming up. <laughs> Aaron, what about you? I've got something a bit different tonight. I've got a Smith & Forge hard cider. Ooh. Made strong in the fine tradition of making things strong. Is that the one that Patrick Stewart endorses? I don't know. I mean, I can get behind anything that Captain Picard gets behind. It's 6%. <laughs> I, I only have it because my sister left it in my fridge. Ah, it sounds good. It tastes pretty good. It's a pretty, you know, standard cider. Found beer is the best beer. <laughs> Ciders are generally my like weakness and go to. It's just you can't go wrong with most ciders. Mm. But I had a pineapple cider when I was in uh, Knoxville. It was wrong. It was not okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was really excited for it too. It was not okay. I mean, the most recent one that I had was a. Um, was a blueberry cider that was actually pretty good. Was it the blueberry jet fuel that Dave makes? No. Uh, that's also a thing, though. <laughs> Last time he brought that stuff to the space, I drank like half a Dixie cup and couldn't feel my face. Yeah, it has a way of doing stuff to you, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was up north. Okay, yeah, I was up at a convention recently, and uh, we had drinks up there and just like, Oh, no, it was Night Shop. It was at Night Shop over in Bloomington. Uh, uh, and they had a really good, it was a uh, German, German cider blueberry. And it was interesting. Um, but a lot of the uh, a lot of the friends that I was with there were all having it. And I was like, well, I might as well give it a try. And I absolutely loved it. It was really good. <laughs> nice. So with that, let's get into some news topics. Right off the bat, we have the Open Press Project. Aaron, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so these guys are on a mission to make printmaking accessible for everyone. So it's a open source uh, 3D printed press. And this is for uh, etchings and engravings. It can do lino cuts, wood cuts, other relief printing techniques. Um, it can do dry points. It's a really simple design, and every, pretty much everything is 3D printed. It's licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial license, so not fully open source in the Libre fashion. Right. But free free for us hobbyists to do what we want with it. I'm particularly excited about it because I love doing um, laser cut relief printing and uh, CNC cut relief printing. So like kind of combining the whole digital fab with manual printing processes yeah, and that's what we did for our uh, table banner, right, for Murph? Yeah. Just very large. Yeah, very large. And I think it. I love the effect that it came out with. I'm, I'm planning on printing one of these, maybe a couple of them, for MakerFest, setting up a little area and then walking away from it and seeing if everything gets smashed by the time I come back. <laughs> well, it looks like there's a good amount of um, social media that they've already had come pouring in from it too. So this is pretty awesome from what I'm being able to see as well. Like I'm kind of curious about it scaling it up a couple times and super volcanoing it and like building a big press with it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Looking at my tubs of filament going, God, I really wish you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> 
have a multicolored press out of different filaments. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of um, multicolored prints and plenty of plastic, uh, Joe, you want to talk about the V2 smoothie printing? Yeah, so I can't say much. Everything I could say is speculation. The smoothie guys dropped a teaser video of the V2 running a couple of Luminatus printers um, at some pretty decent speeds that uh, are pretty exciting. Um, I'm just excited that there is a smoothie V2 in the wild doing something. It gives me hope for the V2 well, project. Because we didn't see any at um, at RepRap. Um, no. The V2 has been like kind of a vaporware project for like four years. Yeah. It's been a Kickstarter that didn't go anywhere after the Kickstarter. And they've been trying to round up interest and funding really heavily for like the last year. So I'm excited to see that there's some definite progress with that. So No, fair enough. Yeah, there were that's awesome. Almost no details with the video. It's just a printer doing the printing thing. Progress. No, fair enough. Well, speaking of RepRap, uh, we have a kind of cool announcement uh, to make about uh, East Coast RepRap Festival. You guys want to talk a little bit about that? You guys have been we're more sponsors, in <laughs> but we're not bringing a keg. We already got told we can't bring a keg, so. Don't get excited, guys. I'm not even sure we're going to bring printers. Like, we're, we're not. We're going to show up and we're going to have a really great time, but I'm not sure what we're going to bring or what we're going to show up with. They got Costco's up there, don't they? They do. They do. We got it covered then. <laughs> <laughs> Just vodka well, Cokes everywhere. So, Aaron, you're going to hate this. There's no outside food or drink at the venue. Ooh. This venue is actually more strict than Maker Fest. Wow. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we'll figure something out. Last year, there was a cash bar and hors d'oeuvres. The high point of it being in a civilized town that's not Goshen, Indiana, is there's bars that stay open past 11. So there was that. And then there was a long walk along our highway back to my hotel with Drew Fustini and... The whole time we were wondering if we were going to get like hit by a car or attacked by a coyote. It was it was a very strange night. Earth is a great time though. Fair enough. I'm particularly looking forward to going to the uh, Air and Space Museum ahead of time. So, Heck yeah. do we still get the spot by the uh, the Tool Changer Corral? Yes, we will be near the Tool Changer Corral. I think that is trying to bribe me into shipping my Tool Changer to Earth. Which the tool changer printed today, Woo! Which, which is like the second time since Murph that it's printed. So, I, you know, that's exciting. I mean, it, it's not that it was broken or anything. It's just that I haven't printed with it, but I got challenged to print some things. So fair enough. Blowing the dust off of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. I know you guys, you two are both confirmed for going. I'm still on the fence right now. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to get some time off to be able to do it. Um, I'd love to be able to actually come and hang out with everybody. Um, it was really do you great. See me glaring see. in my webcam, too. <laughs> I, I made the motion. I was trying not to acknowledge it. <laughs> um, it was really great being able to hang out with everybody at uh, Murph. Um, it was it was incredible to meet some of the fans and just be able to. Um, share drinks with you guys and share stories like you guys are awesome and we appreciate you guys so much so um but yeah just uh look forward to those two there um it's gonna be awesome and hopefully we'll see if i'm able to come out as well other fun things with earth there is a three printed pinewood derby race that anyone can enter i highly recommend it if your car makes it to the end of the track you have a good chance of winning <laughs> fair enough fair enough based on last year's races if you can make it to the end of the track you might win what other fun fun things happened at earth the table you sign up for is likely going to be the table you get that is that is a high point of earth and the fun part of murph where you, where you just show up days ahead of time and you're like shit this is not the table i wanted 
<laughs> All right. I'm just going to move some on stuff. <laughs> Sorry, IC3D. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> when you want to be on the show, let us know. Uh, <laughs> That's all I got for Earth. Cool. No, it's it's looking to be a good time. Everything promotional I've seen from them looks like it's going to be a great time. And um, if you're in the area or even close remotely, uh, you should totally come out. It's a great festival for anybody involved in the maker community. And we highly encourage everybody to go check There's it out. There's also an international airport within like 30 minutes of it. It makes it a lot easier to travel okay. to. Fair enough. Except if you got to take a tool changer. <laughs> Then yeah. flying gets hard. I'm not looking forward to if you got to ship that thing, dude. That's going to build be a crate a... for it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I won't. Be, I'm not the first person. Fair to enough. Build a tool changer. You want to build a crate for a kegerator? No. <laughs> like sp- specifically told no <laughs> on the kegerator. They actually went to the venue and asked before they even invited us. Oh, did uh, they really? Was it, were some of them at yeah. Murph? Is that why? Like, there's cro- okay. It's uh, Chris Plesky. Is one of the guys that runs it, and then uh, the printed solid guys help put it together. Um, yeah, yeah. Chris actually went to the venue and asked ahead of time before he invited us. So I love that we made such an impact that we now have preconceived uh, arrangements have to be made before we come. We certainly through. have a reputation. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's good. <laughs> 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 we know Joe will never be given a mic again. Everybody gives me a mic. It's fine. At least it's fine. <laughs> I just sealed that it was adult time. That's all I did. I mean, <laughs> something like that. So with that, uh, we're going to jump into tonight's topic. Um, and it's kind of an interesting one. Uh, me and Joe were talking about this a little bit uh, while out axe throwing which is another fun thing. Um, and so, uh, Joe, I'm going to let you intro this one, and then we can kind of both go into some of our different experiences with this, both in the past and recently. You know that project that you've been wanting to tackle for years, and you haven't because it scared the crap out of you? That was the project that I did this weekend. I got forced into it. Um. And that's our topic today, or to, yeah, tonight is just things that you've been putting off because you're scared of screwing them up, or you're scared of getting hurt, or you're scared of whatever, and then you finally get around to doing it, and it just turns out to be not that big of a deal. So yeah, mine, and this is kind of a makery thing. It's more of a tools thing. Was um, using an orbital buffer on my cars. Uh, I've had tons of friends over the years that detail cars. I've been taught by really, really good detailers and painters on how to buff, but I've always been terrified of burning the paint on one of my cars until this weekend when I screwed up and let wax dry a little too far and I couldn't get it off. And I was like, Oh no, I guess I'm going to have to drag out my buffer finally that I've had. And, um, and actually try this. And my truck is so shiny. It's amazing. And I took some scratches out. And uh, I didn't screw up my paint. And I was so happy. <laughs> so happy. Nice. Years of terror. Multiple cars. <laughs> I, I don't blame you, man. That's yeah. That's like terrifying. Like... <laughs> Cause like you're, you're at one point where it's like, you could just stay on there for a couple seconds longer. And all of a sudden you're heating that thing up and it's like, Oh, like I remember being in a body shop with helping my friends, uh, wax the car and we found some corners. It was on a Tiburon, which has a ton of sharp corners in its body work. And somebody had buffed over the corners and just taken all the paint down to bare metal and not even realized it. And we're just like, Ooh. how did that? Ha- we have to respray these panels. <laughs> like, uh, what do we do now? And you know, luckily it was a friend's car, it, so it was okay. But like, that has been in the back of my head every time I've had to do anything potentially damaging to my paint to fix anything on one of my cars. So it's very much you have that 
this is the yes. point of no return. Like once you've once you've started, it's like no, this is I can't go back now. I've gotta I've gotta go all in or nothing. Like it's it's terrifying. It nowhere in near in comparison. Um, I recently, well, not recently. This was this was a good amount of time ago. Now, um, I had a project that I was putting together by a model company um, that was quite expensive. Um, it was uh, about about a two hundred dollar model that I was working on, um, and it was in uh, in terms of levels called real grade, which is one of the highest levels. Uh, of detailed that it can be. And I probably let that thing sit in my closet for probably, probably about five months. Cause I just didn't like, I was intimidated by that thing. And it's just like, once you get it out, like you have to finish it or else you're just going to have pieces strung all over the place and you're, you're never going to finish it. Like, yeah, it, it's always going to be there. And, uh, yeah, no, I definitely screwed up some parts. I, I cut some corners on some parts and it kind of shows, but like it's extremely rewarding once you once you get done and you're able to be like ah, like it wasn't as bad as I thought. It was a lot yeah. of in my head. Um that was that was kind of blocking me from this thing. Um that's just one of mine, Aaron. You got anything? Yeah. The first thing that comes to mind for me was uh, learning how to use a CNC router. It was kind of my first foray into uh, any sort of CNC machine. Just the thought of trying to program a, a spinny bit. Yeah. I could like do anything. <laughs> it was very intimidating. I had borrowed, I still have it, the one behind me, the, the small, the small tiny router from the makerspace that no one used. I brought that home one time with the great idea that I'd use it as a learning platform. But then it sat for a good, you know, five, six months because, I don't know, the, the fear of failure really kept me from yes. trying to do anything. And I get that with a lot of things. Like, I have a lot of anxieties with failure. And yeah. lately, I've been, try I've been working on that a lot. And what I've found is that I'm pretty good at figuring things out as I go. The mm -hmm. problem is just starting. So, sometimes when I get into a project like that where... I'm kind of making excuses on why not to start and I keep putting it off. I'll try to do something that will kind of force myself to do it. Like, you know, hitting that purchase button and committing the money to buying the thing that I need. And it's like, well, I spent the money, so I have to make it work now. Or, you know, kind of, or just like jumping head in, like not knowing what I'm doing. I'm like, well, I'm not going to learn if I don't just do it. So I just jump right in, no clue what I'm doing, and then just kind of figure it out. And that's kind of how I approach just about everything now. I'm, I'm always scared for a little bit. And then until I just build up that courage, I just kind of jump in like an idiot and then just try and, you know, try it out. The Do you guys drought. ever like think on the project or the process or the solution so hard that like it comes to you in dreams and like you just can't get it out of your head. But at the same time, you've thought about it so much. You've kind of, hit this point where like the hesitation has forced you to stall and now you can't get past it, but you also can't get that, that thought out of your head. Yeah. Like an analysis but, like, paralysis an obsession analysis yeah. paralysis. I, I get things where like simple things like, uh, I, I had this whole thing when I, uh, ended up lapping in the Gibbs on my CNC mill that I was working on. Um, I totally know what you're talking about. Uh, lapping, sorry, lapping is a process <laughs> where you use an abrasive paste. Um, so for this, I ended up using a metal polish and you just, you, uh, rub it back and forth so much that it ends up smoothing out all of the imperfections in a very slow and gradual way. Um, so like if you're, if you're trying to make a surface stone, uh, very, very, very flat. Uh, they use a very high grit, like several thousand grit other stone and water and just slowly bring it in. And that's lapping. It's the same way when you're doing Gibbs on like a Chinese CNC mill. But um, essentially for that process, you replace the o grease or oil in the Gibbs with 
the polishing compound and you just run them back and forth until all the high spots go away. What's a gib? A gib is a tapered piece of metal that goes between a dovetail joint. <laughs> What's a dovetail joint? Jesus fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what, what are you running for source control on that? Ooh, good question. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a physical thing, guys. There's no source <laughs> control. Anyway, the point is, you could go too far and you can screw things up, and I didn't want to screw up my mill, but I also knew it needed to happen because it had sticky spots in its travel. Uh, so I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and thought about it all the different ways I could do it. And um, I researched it and I talked to other people and I dreamed about it until finally I just got the balls up one day. I it was probably in the middle of the night to just go down and start doing it. And then I had like this huge relief because I finally got past the fear and I finally started digging into the how and figured out that it wasn't that complicated and it wasn't that big of a risk to start trying this. Um, and, uh, then I had this amazing sense of accomplishment because I, I both conquered a fear and gained a skill and accomplished a task. Um, it was huge, but it was terrifying and so frustrating in the beginning. Do you feel like it was more of like a demystifying, like you're kind of more scared because of the, almost the fear of the unknown. Cause you weren't even sure what totally you weren't sure the depth of it, but once you do it, you're like, Oh, well. It's actually not that bad. Totally. But like at the same time, I've, I've started so many projects that the fear of the unknown was totally valid. <laughs> like you get into it and you get to that point where you're like, I wish I would have never even started this. <laughs> That's most home improvement projects for me. Like I, I tear out the flooring and I'm like, you know, that flooring wasn't that bad. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was the same way when I did my kitchen. Like I spent months agonizing over how I was going to do it. And then I did it, and it wasn't that bad. It took me like a day, and it wasn't that hard. But I I overanalyzed how I was going to go about the process of laying all the tiles, how I was going to tear all the old tiles out. I had a lot of these things lately. Tree fell in my yard. I finally got over my fear of chainsaws, bought a chainsaw, cut the tree apart, felt real lumberjacky for a while. It was great. <laughs> No, it's completely like I I had this exact instance or the exact same thing at least happen recently. You had a tree um, fall in your backyard? <laughs> actually, yeah. No, <laughs> I I can send you photos. It was great. That same storm that knocked his over knocked one over in Mars. It was a flipping tree, man. But no, like I I've had this happen a bunch of times with certain projects where it's just like you either get tasked with this thing and you're like, Hey, you need to do this or you, you have to come up with a way to do this. And there's not really any documentation. Like you're just going to have to figure this out. Um, and that can be super intimidating and like fear striking. But at the same time, the reward you get from that is like no other. Um, the thing that I constantly, one of the biggest bragging points that I say about our space um, is the Big E, um, in which we received a, a whole kit for a printer, um, and we had to build that printer from nothing but pictures. Um, and if that, they were they were some pretty, they were pretty sketchy pictures. <laughs> there were two marketing pictures, and then there were other pictures from a previous version that looked nothing like the one that we had. Yeah. <laughs> um but we we sat down all around it one night um and we just knocked that thing out. And it was like it was it was a sense of pride when we ended up taking that thing to Murph and was one of two that had it completed but the only one who was printing uh if I remember right. Um like the other team had gotten it completed, but they weren't able to print with it. And we were actually printing. Um, and that's saying something like that's. It's awesome. 
like it's it's just awesome when you're able to conquer that that intimidation and come out on the other side with something so freaking awesome. I'm trying to think of other examples of this cuz it's this has been such a a huge thing in all of my bigger projects. I actually had the exact same issue when joining the makerspace for the first time. Really? Or visiting. Yeah. I had heard about the makerspace at least, you know, two years before I actually visited for the first time. And I'm not really sure what made me not visit. I don't know. I've never heard this story. Go on. It was definitely more of the fear of the unknown. And and I'm not even sure what I was afraid of. But, like, I knew it existed. Maybe I was just, you know, maybe just scared of not knowing enough, you know. There's this gathering of nerds. Yeah. What if I'm not nerdy enough in the nerd hierarchy? Trust me. You're nerdy enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when I finally ju- when I finally visited for that first time, I actually went to the, uh, when you had the Mini Maker Fest before Murph. Oh, yeah. Um, in 2016, I believe. I, I talked with you about your i4 printer, and I'm like, all oh, these guys are all right. And Jay had his weird wooden printer with all the rods. Yeah. I think still hasn't printed. It's so sad. <laughs> so once I met you guys, it's like, oh, these are just real people. There's nothing to be scared of. And here I am. The king nerd. <laughs> king nerd. <laughs> we're just we're just slightly glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I think a lot of people have that with makerspaces. Um, that is probably the number one reason I've heard of why people don't come is because of the intimidation factor. And if yeah. you're not if you're like if you're an audience member and you you haven't gone to your makerspace because you're intimidated, you should probably just go. Uh, <laughs> they're like spiders; they're just as afraid of you as you are of them. And uh, <laughs> if you're respectful and uh, you keep your distance, everybody will get along. Like <laughs> all the nerds are afraid of each other. It's fine. I'm joking, but it's true. They, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's valid. Like it's, um, I think we all have stories excluding. Ch- well, no, you've gone to other maker spaces. I was going to say, but with our maker space, we all have stories because you started this one. So you kind of are little excluded, but I don't know, man. Lately I go to the maker space. I don't know half the people there and they look at me like I'm the outsider. So, like it's a it's a different feeling. Um, You're the oh, guy with weird mustache. Yeah, it's the yeah. I don't know. I uh, <laughs> but going to another going to an outside space is always interesting um, mm. because you you never know the type of maker you're going to run into. Hey, did you guys see there was a an episode of Silicon Valley? where Galen Belson was like looking out onto the campus and there was like, everybody had these groups of people. There was a fat guy with a ponytail, an Asian guy, a tall, skinny nerd. And there was one other one. And they were like, every group had one of those people. And I feel like every maker space has kind of like those groups. Like I can pick out our different members every time I go to a different maker space. Like, just like little personality types. Um, And you never know who you're going to run into. Uh, And usually you're going to run into the super awesome people that occasionally you run into the egos. And those are the people you just got to brush off because they are definitely the minority. Um, And when you talk to the other people in the space, they will tell you the same. Almost for sure. Uh, I've never run into a space that was all of the big egos. There is, it, yeah. it's always been like a guy who seems to have a maker chip on his shoulder. And then a lot of people go and man, that guy's annoying. <laughs> so yeah, if you're intimidated, just try it. So I've got a question for you guys. So we've talked a bit about our personal experiences with overcoming the fear of failure or whatever of a project for our listeners out there. What would you think 
would be maybe some good things to try to help them get over their fears of trying something new. So mine, mine was a little bit, mine was a little bit of a easier way of getting into it. Um, I fortunately had the opportunity to have my professor in college introduce me into the makerspace. Um, and then also I had the opportunity to attend a class. Um, that was probably the biggest one. Um, attending a class gave me the opportunity to meet, uh, one of our members and longtime officers, Josh. Um, and once I kind of made like that one connection, um, that started opening like friendships slowly throughout everybody else as well. Um, and so that was kind of a cool opportunity to have that kind of slow build, uh, to meet everybody else in the makerspace. If I had to say, probably attend a class or an open night. Um, those are really, really social nights that everybody is kind of geared towards that at that moment. Uh, if you're going in on like a members only build night, expect a lot of unintentional cold shoulder. Um, everybody's kind of working on their own thing. Um, and like you want to catch everybody, like especially these people when they're prepared yeah. um, to be kind of social. Yeah. Cause like I said, the spiders are afraid of you too. They have to be prepared for you. If you're trying to dive into just projects that you're afraid of, like Chris said, uh, classes are huge. Uh, a lot of times classes remove that mystifying effect. A lot of people seem to be afraid of starting a new project in CAD because they're afraid they're going to mess something up. First, that's what CAD's for. You're going to mess things up and uh, that's okay. That's what file new is for. Oh, you can mess up or the free. undo button. Yeah, the only thing it's costing you is time. Yeah. Um, and sometimes time is expensive, but when you're learning new things, you should be respectful of the fact that you're going to screw up and that's okay. But yeah, classes are great. But, you know, especially if you're part of a makerspace, if there is a project that's intimidating you, there is almost certainly somebody at the space who has done that project before. Uh, get real used to asking questions because that is what's going to get you over the hurdle. Um you know, either asking questions or you know, finding a, a member that is willing to share a little bit of their time with you to show you that skill or um, you know, work through that project with you or even simply answer text messages as you're fighting through the project. You know, a lot of times that's all that I can give uh, because of my time. And I'm happy to give that, you know, working through somebody with through Slack or something like that. That that's the best way I think to fight through something you're fearful of is to just start. And as long as it's not something that can hurt you, work through it and ask good questions of the people that are more knowledgeable than you. Yeah. Is that where you're after? Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. So uh what's worked for me was kind of jumping in blindfolded almost. Yeah. And then just just taking it piece by piece. You know, if you go back to our how do you eat an elephant episode of how do you overcome a big a big project or a big challenge and you just same thing I do with you know any new skill or anything I'm not sure what I'm doing, you know, just take one tiny chunk at a time. I don't worry about I, I try not to worry about succeeding. Like with the router that I was learning on, I would say, Well, I wanna make the router do things, so I have to control it. How do I control it? I have to m use like Gerbil or Linux mm -hmm. CNC. So then I install Linux CNC. I try to run it from the panel. Like, oh, well, there's no machine profile. Okay, well, how to make a machine profile? So then I go through that. I find the guides and I learn how to configure a machine. Then you get down, you know, just from doing just the basic stuff, then it's like, oh, well, you know, how many steps per millimeter, you know, do you need this for the same? Like, oh, what's that? So then, uh, then you learn how to calculate, you know, the steps from the, mo the stepper motor to the rotation of the lead screws and it's just it's just a lot of tiny baby incremental steps, and then you know you might you might look you know behind yourself now and you've accomplished all this stuff now, and you might only be halfway to your end goal, but you've already made a lot of progress. I know looking too far ahead gets kind of scary. That's why I, I try to just take little tiny baby steps. Looking too far ahead can completely stall you, because 
often yeah. you put these roadblocks in your way before you even get started. And, you know, you might get started and find out that that stuff's never even going to be an issue or it may never even come up. Um, that happens a lot when people get started. I think they make assumptions of the things that they're going to run into and then they just, they just stall. So, yeah, I think, um, I think just diving in head first is actually really good advice. Fair enough. You guys got anything else you want to say on it? I'm good. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I'd say is if, if you're fearful of a project because of safety, that's probably pretty legit. Uh, um, <laughs> so, uh, please don't go out and buy a welder just on a whim and just think you're going to go straight at it. <laughs> torches are hot enough to burn straight through your pants and into your knee. Don't ask me how I know. Just believe me on that one. Okay. Yeah. That that's, that's the main thing is, um, safety concerns are real and you should take them very seriously. You know, if you have real safety concerns, that's when you really need to consult somebody that knows what they're doing. But yeah, if you're if your concern is purely just based on um, skill or lack of knowledge, just go for it. See what happens or go for it on a smaller scale. Is it last call time? I think so. Final thoughts. Anything else you want to share besides the main topic? No, it's uh it's been great to be a guest on your guys' show. Um, thank you so much for having it's me. Good on. to have you, Chris. Uh, we'll s- You're welcome <laughs> back anytime. <laughs> um, no, I, like it's been, it was great to be back on and just have some fun with you guys again. So, hopefully, work does not steal me away <laughs> continuously. Like it we has missed been. you. I was a little afraid we weren't going to get you tonight. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> well. Thanks for joining me, guys. Aaron, you want to do the breakdown? Yeah. Keep making stuff. This is the end of the podcast. Wait, did we just switch? We did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all staying in, folks.